Good evening. Welcome to Left, Right and Center. I'm Vishnu Shom on the show tonight. The Supreme Court rules that there will be no legal gay marriages for now. But it stressed that an individual's right to enter into a union or relationship cannot be restricted on the basis of sexual orientation. Now, there were four separate judgments in the Supreme Court today with clear differences on the question of adoption rights for queer couples between the judges. While the order today is a setback for the ultimate goal of same-sex marriage, there has been unanimity on the need to address the practical concerns of same-sex couples. Ration cards, pension, succession issues and gratuity, those were raised by the Chief Justice. But it is the government now that will have to address many of the concerns I mentioned. For the moment, the court will not be doing that. Now, some of the statements of the Chief Justice, Justice Chandrachud, championed the rights of queer couples, making it clear that queerness was not restricted to the urban elite. The Chief Justice also said that there is no record available to suggest that only heterosexual couples can provide stability to a child, though ultimately Justice Chandrachud was in the minority on the issue of adoption rights for gay couples. What we'll do on this program is deconstruct the order today, look at the main points and look at where this issue is headed. Later on on the show, my colleague Maria Shakil in an exclusive interview with the Israeli ambassador to Delhi, who makes it clear that the situation on the Gaza Strip cannot be resolved without direct intervention. But first, the landmark judgment of the Supreme Court on whether or not gay marriage uh, can in fact be legalized. Here are some of the key points. A setback for gay rights in India, a Supreme Court on Tuesday refused to legalize same-sex marriage. The five-judge constitution bench upheld the rights of queer couples under the existing laws, but refused to read down or read words into the Special Marriage Act, guaranteeing marriage equality. The court said that it's for the parliament and state legislatures to enact laws recognizing and regulating queer marriages. Uh, I'll begin by reading out some of our portions. There's a degree of agreement and there's a degree of disagreement. Writing the minority opinion uh, in the I'll landmark case, Chief Justice D.Y. Chandrachud, along with Justice Sanjay Kishan Kaul, has held Queerness is a natural phenomenon known to India since ancient times. It is not urban or elite. It's in the domain of parliament and state legislatures to enact law recognizing and regulating queer marriage. This court cannot either strike down the constitutional validity of Special Marriage Act or read words into because of institutional limitations. The state has an obligation to recognize unions of queer couples and grant them benefit under law. Unmarried couples, including queer couples, can jointly adopt a child. Government shall not discriminate against the freedom of queer persons to enter into union with benefits under law. The court asked the government to set up a committee to look into the practical concerns regarding benefits and services to the same-sex couples. Justice Ravindra Bhatt, who formed the majority opinion in the judgment, along with Justice Hima Kohli and Justice Narasimha, has held that legal recognition of right to union akin to marriage or civil union or conferring legal status upon the parties to the relation can be only through enacted law. Consistent with the statement before this court during the course of the proceeding, the union shall set up a high-powered committee chaired by the cabinet secretary to undertake a comprehensive examination of all relevant factors, especially including those outlined above. In the conduct of such exercise, the concerned representatives of all stakeholders and the views of all states and ter union territories shall be taken into account. Solicitor General Tushar Mehta, who represented Centre in the case, welcomed the judgment, stating it balances the interests of individuals with interests of the society. Supreme Court, while stopping short of legalizing same-sex marriage, has accepted the submission of Centre that a committee under Union Cabinet Secretary will be formed to defend rights and entitlements for queer couple who are in union. With camera person Ashwini Mehra, this is Arvind Gunasekhar for NDTV. Well, joining us now, Dr. Abhishek Manu Singhvi, senior uh, lawyer, uh, Congress leader, Rajya Sabha MP, somebody who's uh, legally represented. 
uh, one of the petitioners in this case. Thanks, Dr. Singh, very much for being with us. Now, Justice Bhatt said that the court cannot create the legal framework for queer couples to get married, among other issues. While the Chief Justice said, and I quote, uh, my learned brother acknowledges the discrimination against the queer couples, but does not issue directions. I cannot come to terms with such an approach. Could you share with us your opinion of the contrast that we saw in the order which was passed today? Uh, Vishnu, uh, thank you. First of all, uh, whatever I say, you can always understandably take with a pinch of salt because I was the lead counsel for yes. the petitioners yes. seek recognition of marriage, but uh, of, of het or non heterosexual marriage. But let me just start by saying that I must confess that I am very deeply disappointed. Mm -hmm. It's a historic opportunity missed. Now, just take the point you mentioned. The argument, the principal argument of all five, forget the difference between them, is that you cannot read into the SMA yes. a constitutional compliant interpretation, which we said must be read into it to eliminate discrimination arising from what is ascriptive conditions. Ascriptive conditions only means, Vishnu, that you are really discriminating between persons on account of things like sexual orientation or gender, which is involuntary condition, not taken by choice. Now, this argument is met by saying it requires legislation. We cannot do judicial legislation. But tell me, Vishnu, uh, the legislation they did when they decided the basic structure theory, is that not many times more a reading into a substantive doctrine than what we were asking for? Take, for example, when they read consultation, the word in the Constitution, to mean concurrence and thereby made appointments of judges the sole prerogative of the Supreme Court. That was by interpretation. Yes. By reading the word. Now, the, what we are asking for, this was much lesser. Take the case, for example, of reading due process, substantive due process into Article 14, which was never there. In fact, the Constitution framers rejected it. So the point is that this is really a bit subjective in the sense that when the Supreme Court is wanted, they have read much, 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 much more into what we ask for the very simple thing. In a SMA, you read the word husband or wife to include same sex persons. That's not a very big leap for the no. judiciary to do. Point one. Point two is that you did not answer so many questions which we were raised. One was the ascriptive conditions uh, question we raised, that it is discrimination based on conditions which are involuntary. But equally, you have not you have not denied that there is decisional autonomy. You have not denied that there is right to privacy. You have not denied that there is right to decisional autonomy, etc. And yet you have not read this minimal into the SMA. Now, you have really salved your conscience by saying things like a civil union or uh, rather a union of two uh, non-heterosexual people must get, uh, you know, recognition in terms of rights. There cannot be discrimination. There cannot be oppression. Yeah. But this is really not meeting the test at all. It is avoiding the question largely. No, and but I uh, feel... But, but sir, yeah. you know what Justice Bhatt said, and this is about the Special Marriage Act. Now, the, you argued, the petitioners in this case argued that the Special Marriage Act must be interpreted in a manner which is neutral to gender and sexual orientation. The Solicitor General had argued that tinkering with the Special Marriage Act can have a cascading effect. Now, in light of, of the majority order, what is the cascading effect that it can have that the majority of judges believe to be the truth? I believe that the solicitor and the government of India successfully created a behemoth of public antipathy, which somehow pushed back, stopped in their tracks the judges who would otherwise have intended or wanted to do this slight interpretive leap, which is yes. not a big leap. Yes. But there was a whole uh, kind of uh, hawa, if I may say so, created about public antipathy. Now, your question has a very specific answer. Yes. What great... Uh, distortion of the SMA are you doing by reading husband and wife to include same-sex couples. We said we don't want to get into religion. 
Today, the SMA is religion neutral. Yes. We said that we want only the minimal recognition by reading husband and wife, which re marriage is registrable to include same sex marriages. Now, I do not see any insuperable leap of the faith in so reading it, except to say that, look, we are not judge. We are not legislators. We cannot do it. Do it through legislation. But then I've given you examples. You've done much, much more. When you read consultation to mean concurrence, it was a far bigger leap. Sure. When you created the basic structure, doctor, far bigger leap. So really, it's a value judgment. For some reason, the judges felt a little hesitant, if I may say, judicially fearful, uh, somewhat restrained thinking that this whole thing is a huge public backlash, a chimera created by the government. Let me tell you one more thing. Most governments, including this one, would not be interested in doing anything resembling this recognition. To leave it to the legislature is to leave it to eternity. Now, it's all right. You can make some few guidelines saying that in the public space, I can't thrash you because you're a same-sex couple. You can make some rules saying that in a restaurant, there cannot be discrimination or a separate sitting space. You can make those. These are soft, these are soft options. You should have taken the no, hard So the leap of faith that, that you were hoping for, that many around this country were hoping for, clearly hasn't happened. But let me ask you this, sir. The Chief Justice, in his opinion, and this is important, and it, 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 as I understand it, has ramifications beyond this case. He said that the doctrines of the separation of powers and the doctrine of judicial review, right? He, he, he elucidated the doctrines of separation of power and the doctrine of judicial review. He explained both in fairly simple English. Now, how is this significant, not just in this case, but otherwise as well? And I ask this because there are some, and this has been the consistent line of argument of the government, saying that no, the judges, the courts cannot decide this. There are restrictions, limitations on what a judge can do. I think. Whereas uh, he went uh, into the separation of powers and said, no, in fact, the courts can do a lot more. What I fault the other three is for not even doing the minimal judicial review, which you can do. What I applaud the Chief Justice is to go the farthest of the five and say judicial review is available, I can judicial review. But why, what I also fault the Chief Justice's, uh, Chief Justice's judgment along with Justice Paul is that they have not fully walked the talk after having found the power of judicial review. The power of judicial review is recognized, the separation of powers is not found to be an impediment, but then they have not walked the next step. As I said, there is no insuperable leap of the faith. On the contrary, okay. what you say, they did not take the leap. I don't think there's a big leap of the faith. It's a simple interpretive exercise by which you hold the words husband or wife or couples to mean same sex. That is, of course, an interpretation which is an advance in law that might be called by some a little more progressive than it should be. But there is not such an acrobatic leap which is not done. Much more acrobatic leaps are taken by judges. All right. And I think the Chief Justice recognizes the power of judicial So bottom review. line, Dr. Singhvi, is short, that by stop, stop, pushing this thing. into the hands of the government, it is your fear that this is just going to be uh, kicked down indefinitely and that, you know, I mean, no government may actually want the to do anything about it. The government committee is given very soft cosmetic options. Is there a time, is there a time bound uh, feature on, in, in this? There is a time bound feature in terms of constituting the committee. I don't see any feature in terms of implementing the entire package. And secondly, the package which will be coming out of the committee, you can take it from me, will be a very soft, ambiguous, uh, very light touch cosmetic package. It cannot be the hard nose substantive thing. What are these people wanting ultimately? They are wanting that decisional autonomy, that dignity, that free speech and expression of their status as same sex couples right. to be recognized in a marriage. Now that all the committees doing these things about, you know, public places, discrimination, access. Of course, the Chief Justice did take a revolutionary step in terms of the adoption. I understand. But otherwise... But the others didn't. All, the others didn't. Other, and that will be treated as a minority judge. Just, just a final question before I go across to my panelists, uh, Dr. Singhvi. Uh, in his... Uh, our, um, and, and it's a simplistic question, excuse me. The points mentioned by the Chief Justice where he's called for state governments and the center to ensure that certain rights of uh, LGBTQI members are protected. That is binding, right? Irrespective of the fact that he has a minority order? I would say so because Justice Call expressly agrees. The other 
judges who form the three do not disagree. So I would say yes. But that is a very minimalistic, negative equality of a different kind. Sure. This petition is not about that. But yes, the answer is it is enforceable. You cannot harass a couple for being same sex. You cannot say that because you are living openly as a same sex couple, you'll be denied benefit of, let us say, tenancy or you know access to a flat. No, no, but, 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 but uh, these are important but, steps, sir. For, for example, sufficient care has to be taken to cater to mental health. No one should be forced to go to hormonal therapy with respect to their gender. He issued di directions to state governments to protect health and safety of same-sex couples. He has given benefits to queer couples such as ration cards, the right to nominate the next of kin. You know, when we were, uh, we were uh, looking at this earlier on, these were all points that members of the LGBTQI community this insisted on. This is of course on. welcome. This is of course welcome. And it, it is binding. About. It is binding, sir. It is. I would say it is binding. There are people who would say that this is... So how is that resolved? I understand that, your larger it, point, Dr. Singhvi, the larger goal I, has not been achieved. But how is this... Resolved, this why is why do you say that there's a question mark on whether this can I, be adopted or not? I tell you, I'll tell you. The uh, government is unlikely to contest this part of the Chief Justice's order as a minority and unimplementable. The government is quite happy to have a committee which will again ratify, repeat, reiterate these parts and make it part. Because these are, in a sense, non-invasive. They are, according to me, minimalistic, and the government would be quite happy to achieve an equilibrium at this level. Sure. All right, Dr. Singh, so, great speaking to you. Thanks yes. very much. And I, I understand that, uh, you know, it's been disappointing to you. It's certainly been no. disappointing to many members of the LGBTQI uh, community in this country. But um, I do believe, uh, as, as a personally, as a champion of rights myself, some of the observations made by the Chief Justice of India are far-reaching and perhaps give us, yeah. uh, as Indians, and uh, and you know, uh, yeah. a chance to reaffirm some of the, the, the finest aspects of our constitution. Thanks, sir, very much for Thanks. being with us. Uh, we're joined now by Shreyas Maheshwari, an associate at Karanjawala and Company, a, a, an advocate of, a, of a, one of the petitioners, Onir, the Indian film director and author of I Am Onir and I Am Gay. Zena Patel is a transgender activist and also a petitioner in this case. Professor Geeta Bhatt joins us uh, as also Ashutosh Srivastav, who is a Supreme Court um, uh, advocate. Uh, Professor Geeta Bhatt, you know, one of the points which had been argued earlier on was that queerness was an urban or elite concept. Um, I think it was the Chief Justice and who emphasized, and I think it was backed up by the other judges, who said that uh, Queerness is not an urban concept or, or an elite concept. It is a concept. It exists. And there was an emphasis that the institution of marriage is not necessarily stagnant as a concept either, but it is, you know, an ever-changing one. So while marriage uh, for gay couples hasn't been accepted now, do you believe these statements, most of these came from the Chief Justice, are still important as we debate this? Well, Vishnuji, uh, yes, I do agree that we uh, cannot distinguish between, uh, you know, be queer being a elitist or a, a rural concept. And uh, definitely, I think the uh, Chief Justice also mentioned that uh, uh, this has been, you know, through the civilization, we have seen the existence of non-heterosexual uh, orientations. Uh, it was, it has also been illustrated uh, by, you know, Rishi Vatsa and by writing Kama Sutra. All this is very much, and uh, I think that uh, you know, in uh, in our society, uh, the non-heterosexual orientation was very much accepted as a part of the society. It was not that ever there was any, uh, from religious point of view, there was any kind of discrimination towards them. But at the same time, if you you know, if we look at uh, in terms of uh, when we talk about of a marriage between uh, two individuals, then. Uh, per se, we we still cannot say that this uh, that uh, although it happens between two individuals, yet it uh, defines the concept of uh, you know being in the domain of uh, the privacy of between two people because there are consequences to it. Mm -hmm. And at this time, when uh, we are discussing it, you know, if we look at uh, the United Nations General Assembly resolution which defines how they define marriage uh, across the world, they are still defining it. Defining marriage as uh, you know, uh, men and women of uh, uh, you know of uh, full age without any limitation of race and nationality and religion can uh, you know go into a union. 
and uh, they uh, can form a family so uh, while the you know nature has uh, uh, created man and woman to procreate and uh, to form a family at the same time there are it is very much acceptable that there are exceptions in the society and they are very well accepted in the society at the same time but if you but as far as the judgment goes i think there are uh, as uh, mr singhvi was mentioned my observation was that since when this uh, hearing was going on and the petition was specially placed to make alteration in the special marriage act now yes. if you if if you look at it in terms of special marriage act he he mentioned that it is uh, you know new religion neutral but if you look at it there are mentions in chapter 4 where it talks of consequences of marriage under this act i am i i do not have a law degree but whatever i have read on it there are uh, there are observations where it says the specs for example effect of marriage on member of undivided family and so on and so forth where in um, you know hindu marriage act has been mentioned so why laws no so uh, so it has a cascading effect that's can, what justice yeah. bhat also said yeah just, just 10 seconds more what i Uh, what i meant to say was that uh, you know laws which are related to marriage and uh, the rights which are subsequent to it they are different and also they are not uniform because okay. in this country we have an intri- intricate mix of personal laws okay. and if we look at you know islam and christianity uh, <clears throat> their uh, you know their standing on non heterosexuality is something which ha- is which is very very extreme okay let's so, let's, let's let's leave that aside uh, geeta ji for just a moment i i just okay. want to go to go across to zainab zainab there were important references in the order today which referred to uh, transgender couples who adopt um, uh, the the role uh, of of a man or a woman in other words uh despite their being transgender have uh, in a sense uh, a heterosexual uh, uh associate association and that is legal right could you explain to us how that works and is that something new or is that something that's always existed so so very quickly vishnu um in terms of what flowed from the nalsa judgment today zena patel identifies as a woman she has a legal document there is nothing stopping me from entering into a heterosexual uh, relationship where i identify as a woman with another man mm-hmm. or another, where someone identifies as a man and i identify as a woman now this was upheld also in the madras high court judgment where the court directed the registrar to uh, register the marriage between a trans woman and her partner but calling it loud in the supreme court judgment very prominently now paves the way not only in the special marriages act but in the personal laws as well do we expect some kind of repercussion from religious group definitely we've already seen a couple of negative reactions already in the press from religious groups but i just look at it in this way although there is no fundamental right to marry but we do have positives like trans people have the right to marry the recognition of everyone to enter into relationships to be protected and the need for an equality law so i i do see the pos- positive side of it but also the fact that what we have known and experienced and lived for a very long time for for trans people at least there is supposed to be some kind of legal sanction now that there is an operative part of a judgment so, so that is important isn't it zena because while i understand that um, that gender uh, and sexual orientation is entirely fluid it's not black or white um, the fact that there is now a categorical mention in the supreme court order saying that there is an a possibility of of marriage on the basis of the identity that you choose as long as one partner is male one partner is woman is this not a work around and therefore one that protects the rights of trans people or gay people for for a gay couple yes it does have implication but for a lot of trans people who identify in the sense of gender that yeah, this is a positive win how we work around this for the larger community of non binary identifying people is still peace and progress i would leave that to the uh, to the operative part once we are able to digest the entire judgment i have just been able to see the last part of the judgment which calls this out but i really don't have anything to comment till my till my legal team is able to put something more specifics into it uh shreyas uh, one of the uh, important parts of 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 a part of the order there were four orders uh, and this is what the chief justice said to protect the rights of members of the lgbtqi community 
the Chief Justice said that there cannot be any discrimination, sufficient care for mental health. Um, he held that no one should be forced to go into hormonal therapy with respect to their gender. He issued detailed directions to the, step, uh, to the states to protect health, safety, etc., etc. He also gave benefits to queer couples, such as ration cards, the right to nominate next of kin. Right? Are these not landmark? These are certainly landmark and I would say let's not restrict to only Justice uh, Chandrashud but if you also go to Justice Call, yes. he also mentioned that there should be anti-discrimination law which is again a very landmark statement made by the bench there. But in my personal opinion I believe this will, these things like gratuity, pension, employment, right to kin, medical practitioners will once ahead go to the uh, <laughs> panel which has been constituted and the rights will flow from there. But the <clears throat> basic fact, the basic element of this being present in the judgment will have a major stakeholding while these uh, bouquet of rights which will be coming out by the panel will have a major holding. Ashutosh, um, do you believe that um, getting laws through this, uh, this committee, etc., etc., in a finite period of time to ensure basic things like ration card, the right to nominate next of kin, um, you know, uh, who, who do you identify as a hospital attendant in the case of, uh, you know, of two people in a, in a gay relationship? Um, these are basic yes. fundamental rights or basic human rights. And therefore, ensuring that yes. it's there on a piece of paper would be very easy to ensure, would be very easy to, relatively easy to implement. See, uh, the Supreme Court has recognized these, these issues which were raised in the petitions and accordingly it has recommended for the you know high level committee who can prepare the draft and can recommend to the uh, government you know for the formation of law i feel the supreme court today has passed a very balanced uh, judgment and uh, it has also respected the doctrine of separation of powers and it realized that uh, there is uh, no scope to interfere into you know the pre pre uh, preparation of a new law and uh, so far as the interpretation of the Special Marriage Act is concerned, it has gone deep into the details uh, of the act and accordingly came to a conclusion that uh, there is no such a scope for gender neutrality at present, uh, which can be uh, you know, recognized by the Supreme Court. Yes, so far as the protection, dignity, respect of the community is concerned, the Supreme Court has passed uh, uh, you know, numerous guidelines and has also given certain directions uh, to the central government, to the state government, to the union territories, and also to the police department uh, while dealing with such kind of, a, of cases where the, uh, you know, the two same sex uh, couple, if they are going out or if uh, any complaint is received, how, uh, you know, th those complaints are to be dealt with. If the consent of both of the members, you know, uh, it is there and they are going with their consent. So in these kind of cases where uh, the violence or any sort of cruelty are exerted on these uh, uh, members of the community, how it has to be protected, how being the citizens of this country, their rights have to be protected and uh, they sh should be safeguarded. So no, but Ashutosh, just one point of clarity and I ask you as a yes. lawyer, the Chief Justice, in his opinion, elucidated the doctrines of separation of powers and the doctrine of judicial review and seemed quite categorically to suggest that the process of judicial review can happen nonetheless, that it is not enough to say that uh, the separation of powers means that only the, the legislature can do something and the courts cannot touch that. He seemed to suggest that there is always yes. scope for review. And therefore, yes. is, that, See, is that part of what he said wasn't that something that the others accepted? And if so, is that not something which is binding? See, judicial review was the matter. They reviewed judicially. And see, there can be different interpretation of the judicial review by uh, different judges. That is why, uh, you know, in these kind of constitutional matters, uh, generally, you know, uh, number of judges like five judges bench or something like sure. that is set up always so that the interpretation of particular law can be made in a proper way. Whether, you know, the interpretation recognizes the uh, prayer clause of the petitioners or if it is something where the, uh, you know, it will hamper the doctrine of separation of powers. And accordingly, 
find you know the supreme court reached to such a conclusion with majority that no we cannot interfere into the powers of the parliament yes once the law is framed and if any part of the law is unconstitutional no it was about interpretation can, it was about interpretation yes, yes. Yes, I'm. I'm. I'm just. I'm. I'm just explaining about the future aspect also. Sure. You know. So that is how you know the Supreme Court or any court functions. Now, Supreme Court has not only given it to the Parliament at the you know uh, to the central government, but it has also said that even the state governments have the powers. Even they can make laws for the state. Yeah, but the Supreme it Court retains the option of reviewing any aspect of what the legislature does. That was what. the chief justice said yes. and as i understand yes. it none of the other judges disagreed with that right but let's let's move on otherwise yes. ashutosh we can talk about this uh, you know uh, at length and it is fascinating only i think that the, the bottom line over here is that gay couples will not be able to enter a, a union of marriage how much of a setback is that i think for me it was a landmark let down because i understand all the technicalities listening to all the arguments but when i look at you i'm thinking that why is it that you are more entitled than me as a citizen in this country why is someone else more equal than me and all the justifications all the arguments fall flat because i was thinking today when the judgment was coming out all our life we have been watching movies where at some point in a man uh you know or a woman proposes to each other and i thought that maybe now after today's judgment that at 54 i would be able to ask someone will you marry me but uh, i don't think that's a possibility so i don't really care about all this you know uh, legalities whatever i just think that being treated as an equal being treated having all the rights that everyone else sitting here i mean everyone else has Uh, as a heterosexual why should i be denied that as a equal citizen in this country and even if i'm just one person you know i need it i need to be treated as equal and this is a big disappointment agita how do you how do you answer something like that you know you and i can quote the, the supreme court order chapter and verse but uh, onir is a human being and an indian just like we are and if he says that why is it that you on this panel have more rights than me how can we deny that the fact is that we do on the basis uh, of our orientation doesn't that sound terribly unfair geeta well vishnu ji see there are uh, there are uh, various such uh, issues there which are still there uh, although as per article 14 and 15 we all have equal uh rights and equal rights to fight discrimination but we do realize that even today there are you know women who don't have uh, uh equal uh, right to property that they, they are we are you know citizens of the same country so these uh, you know there are certain uh, inequalities which are there in the society but at the same time i think it is there uh, there is a sensitivity towards the non heterosexual orientation people who have non sexual orientation we need to work on it more in the society uh, the discrimination which as and when if it is existing anywhere that needs to be uh, taken away we need to the government needs to come out with a uh, certain you know working uh, part where there the issues which are related to them having uh you know uh, some kind of a protection which they, at times they have been uh, facing that it is not there that needs to be worked upon sure so i think the government has uh, agreed to form a committee and look into the look into various aspects sure. of which which i definitely i think will make uh, mr onir uh, more comfortable well i certainly hope that th this is progressive and you know it it isn't limited to just uh you know uh, uh, some sort of a soft solution that there is something really tangible over there we've done an entire discussion debate on this and we've not even gotten into the issue of adoption just look at the number of issues that exist but i suppose we'll return to look at the entire issue of what uh, of adoption uh, that has been denied to uh, to to gay people uh, and the significance of that and the arguments which have been raised but for now we're going to take a short break i'd like to thank you all very much for being with us